All right, we're live. Welcome to Law Dog University. This is our second class on criminal law. And what we're going to be talking about today is search and seizure. Uh, and so uh, hold on to your horses. I think, you know, the students, you're supposed to bring your Fourth Amendment uh, to the U.S. Constitution, and that's what we're going to get into today. Uh, and so uh, what we're going to talk about now is uh, how the class runs, all right? So this is our second class on the Fourth Amendment. I'm going to talk about three cases today. Um, they're going to deal with the issue of the Fourth Amendment and what's a search. We kind of talked about this uh, last week with Katz on Thursday. See, I had, you know, you guys were like, you know, you need to do more than one class a week, Professor Lawson. I know you ain't got nothing else to do since you shut in. So, okay, we're doing two classes a week. All right. And so on Thursday, we're going to get into the automobile searches. All right. If a police officer pulls you over, claims they smell marijuana, uh, can they get you out and search your car? And what areas of the car can they search? But right now, I want you to kind of get an understanding of what is a search for purposes of the Fourth Amendment. All right. I'll try to keep it about 30 to 30, 30 to 45 minutes, but y'all know I can talk a lot. But these cases is fun as hell, man. Uh, I enjoy doing it because these are the types of cases that you actually see in the news. You know, when you see uh, people being arrested, when you see people being uh, shot or uh, you see people's houses being kicked in. You watch Law and Order. All that is this law that we're going to learn. All right. When you have a question, post it in the comments. And our attorney, Jennifer Brown, uh, she said after the COVID uh, shut-in, her hair is not looking quite like that today. But this is uh, Jennifer here. Uh, she's the associate director of the Williamson's Project. And she's going to communicate with me through this thing in my ear. Okay. Uh, and that way, if you got questions or something like that, post them up there as we go live. Uh, and then uh, eventually I'll answer your questions. And at some point, I'm going to ask uh, you questions. Uh, I'll be going over um, the video afterwards, uh, like I did last week. So even after this sh uh, class is over with, go ahead and put your questions in there. If I don't get to them during the live part of this, I will try to answer all the questions that I can as we go through it. All right, after I finish... Uh, we're going to go over what you learn. I'm going to ask you a hypothetical question. All right, I'm going to challenge you. It's not, you know, and, and look, let me tell you something. For those of you that had dreams of becoming a lawyer, but because of, of uh, you know, life, right, you weren't able to fulfill that dream, uh, you know, I'm bringing this to you the same way that I teach it at law school and the same way that I, well, not the same way I learned. My professor was nowhere near as entertaining as yours truly, but uh, I had a great professor at University of Cincinnati uh, College of Law. Uh, so anyway, so Fourth Amendment. And you all heard about it, but, you know, it, it's easy to uh, uh, read over it, but not understand everything in it. So it's the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. Keep this in mind, man. Every search and every seizure by the police isn't a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Only those that are unreasonable searches and seizures. You know, if a police officer pulls you over and gives you a ticket, right? Let's say he pulls you over and, and he thinks that you're speeding. You're not under arrest, right? But you've been seized. Is that a violation of your Fourth Amendment right? No. Why? Because it's not an unreasonable seizure. All right, but we'll get, to, get back to that later. All right, so those of you that's catching up, last week we talked about cats. Remember cats? is a guy that was in the phone booth and the government put a uh, listening device outside the phone booth and the court came up with a two-pronged test to determine whether or not your Fourth Amendment rights to privacy have been violated. An individual has an, exhibited an actual or subjective expectation of privacy and the expectation is one society's prepared to recognize as reasonable. Now, you're going to learn this. I know you're saying, Lawson, what the hell are you talking about? Those that's new to the class, don't worry about it. I'm going to tie it all in. Tie it all in real quick. If both of these requirements have been met and the government has taken an action which violates the expectation, then the government's action has violated individual rights. So we're going to have three cases today. Kylo versus United States, decided in 2001. Illinois versus Cabals, decided in 2005. And Florida versus Jardines. All right, so let's do this first one. Now, this first one, this guy, here's what happened. This, this police officer got, uh, this federal agent got uh, wind that this guy was growing marijuana inside of his house. This was back in 1992. This guy's name was Kylo, right? And so what, this guy, what, what the police did was 
they took a thermal imaging device that can, you can point it at somebody's house and then see how hot it is. And because I know you guys, my, my audience and my students at Law Dog University don't know anything about lights, lamps inside of a house, growing marijuana. Uh, I know you don't. But uh, those, some people uh, uh, do that stuff, right? And so what you can do with one of these devices is you can point it at the house and see how much heat is being elevated from that house, right? And so again, the officer was told by some snitches on the street, like, hey, you know what? Uh, Kylo down there growing uh, weed out of his house. They, and, you know, a lot of these people just be haters, right? They just go to, or they could be a snitch because they got in trouble. Now they want to uh, tell on somebody else to get out of trouble. But that's another story. So look, based on an informant's uh, tips, right, uh, uh, that there was uh, um, marijuana growing in there. This guy, he goes out there, this officer. He doesn't go on the property. He's in his, he's in his car. He's in his car on the street where he has a right to be. He points the imaging device at the house and it just lights up. It's like three o'clock in the morning when he does this, right? And so then he goes and he gets the utility bills from this guy's house to see that the electric is off the hook. And he goes and he goes to a judge. The officer goes to a judge and he says, Judge, look, I need a warrant to go into Kylo's house here. Uh, I need a search warrant because I believe he's engaged in growing marijuana. And the judge says, well, how do you know that, man? Why should I give you a warrant? Where's your Well, here's what I did. I had information from informants that this guy's growing weed. So what I did was I went and got me a thermal imaging device. And I sat outside of his house at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I just pointed it at him. And the judge said, did you go on the property? He said, no, I didn't go on the property. I'm sitting in my car on the street, right? And so I'm looking, and I, and I see that the imaging device and the heat is just going off the, the, the roof. And so then when I match utility bills and show how high it was compared to other prices, you know, other people on the same um, block, the utility bill is nowhere near where Kylo's is, right? So I need you to give me a warrant so I can go in there and see if he's got marijuana. The judge gives him the warrant. So the police, they go into the house, they search it, they find the marijuana, and they arrest Kylo, right? The government argued that the judge had issued a warrant. They never uh, went anywhere near the property. Kylo, well, Kylo, did, Kylo went to his lawyer and said, hey, man, something ain't right about this. He said, I think you should file a motion to suppress. And the lawyer started thinking. He said, well, you know, if they didn't go on your property and they, they were on the street, how is it that they somehow violated your Fourth Amendment right? Now, let's go back. Real quick. I, I hate to do this to you, but I got I to bring it up. Right, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizure. And what the police were saying when the lawyer filed a motion to suppress and the prosecutor said, hey, we didn't go into the house. We didn't search and seize anything. Right, and what Kylo's lawyer argued was when you took that device and you pointed it at my client's house, you was, in, you was invading his privacy right. In other words, you were searching inside of his house. Right? With that device. Even though you were nowhere near. And, and, the, and the police kept saying, how can we be searching it when we had a right to be on the street? You follow what I'm saying? And so we get back to the test. Right? Remember the test we just talked about. An individual has exhibited actual subjective expectation of privacy. That's the first prong. And what Kylo is saying is, I'm in my house. What, whatever I'm doing inside my house, I'm doing it privately. So he does have an actual belief, subjectively, that if I'm in my house, what I'm doing in here is private, right? That's reasonable. And then, is this an expectation that society's prepared to recognize as reasonable? In other words, does society say, yeah, you know what, if somebody's inside their house, they do have an expectation of privacy that we're trying to say is reasonable. If those two things are met under the CATS test, then there's a search, right? So now we know when we look at the Fourth Amendment, now we know we have a search. Now the question is, is it unreasonable? See, so now what, so now what the, so, so the, the police and the prosecutor saying, okay, judge, fine. You claim this is a search, even though all we're doing is pointless. That's fine, but it ain't unreasonable, right? We had a warrant that when we went in there to get the marijuana. And what the Supreme Court ruled was, the only way that you got that warrant is through an illegal search. Had you not searched that man's house with that device, you would have never known 
that he was having those hot lamps in there driving up all that heat. Therefore, the Supreme Court suppressed it. And they also said this. They said, look, that device, this was in 1992. The case was decided in 2001. It didn't get to the Supreme Court until 2000. And, and it was decided in 1990. It happened in 1992. It took until 2001 to get to the Supreme Court. So back in 90, 1992, the court said, hey, look here. Nobody, that, that imaging device, that thermal imaging device is not common to a lot of people. Uh, and so it was something to where everybody has a reasonable expectation of privacy. All right. And so that's that case. All right. So again, they didn't test your property. Okay. Now let's do Illinois versus Cavalls. This involves a drug sniffing dog. Now, you know, sometimes if you go to stadiums or some stadiums or you go to some events, uh, you got dogs that are walking around the car. Those dogs mainly are looking for bombs or weapons uh, that, that could be used to hurt people. Then you got your drug sniffing dogs, right? And so here's what happened here. Illinois State Trooper stopped Roy Cabal's uh, for speeding on the highway, right? So why he's, so the trooper pulls over Roy and calls it into dispatch like, look, I got this guy over here. I'm about to uh, give a speeding ticket to. Another officer hears that over the, the police radio band. So he got a drug dog in the back of his cruise and he ain't got nothing else to do. So he go over there to meet up with his fellow officer. So while the officer is giving Cabal's a ticket. So imagine if you're sitting in your car, police officer pulls you over for speeding. So you know they go back and they take their time. Another cruiser comes up, pulls out a dog, right, while you're waiting on your speeding ticket till the officer fills it out, and takes the dog and walks it around your car. And the dog is sniffing around your car for what? Contraband, marijuana, or drugs. And then the dog hits off in the trunk. And, and alerts to the fact that there's marijuana in your car. Now, instead of a speeding ticket, Cabal's gets pulled out, he gets a, uh, a set next to the car, and then the police search the car based on the dog sniffing it. Right? And so Cabal's goes to uh, uh, court and says, hey, this is an a illegal search and seizure. That was an illegal search. You got this dog searching my car by sniffing at it. And the question to the court was, was this uh, a search, right? Uh, so, uh, again, the, the, on the basis of the alert, the trooper searched the trunk, found marijuana, they arrested cabals. The entire incident lasted less than 10 minutes, all right? The question for the court, the issue, right? So whenever you, you, you're talking about, uh, when, when we're teaching law to the law students and I'm teaching to you, what's the issue then, right? Can, and the issue is, did the dog sniff that was performed on the outside of the car, on the public highway, right, while the driver was seized for a traffic violation, violate the federal constitution's fourth amendment, right? And the U.S. Supreme Court held that the use of a well-trained narcotics detection dog, one that did not expose non-contraband items, in other words, they said, no, this was, this was not a violation. The dog sniff was performed on the outside of the car. While, the, while you were still getting your ticket. So what the Supreme Court said, look, you're getting your ticket anyway. So it ain't like they stopped you, they had a dog sniff your car. Now the question is, how did that invade, what privacy interest do you have in the air around your car? Because the dog never touched your car, the dog never went in it. And so if the dog is going around the car uh, sniffing, but ain't touching your car, it's not in your car, and you're on a public highway, and you are legitimately stopped, Right? Then there's no Fourth Amendment violation because, and here's what the court was saying, the dog is smelling marijuana come from your car. And because you really don't have a right to have contraband, there's been no violation of your rights. All right. Now that leads us to, to, to our, our third case, another dog sniffing case, right? So the local police receive, here's what happens. Let me drink my water. So, the, the, the police received tip again, information they claim that Jardines in Florida is, is, is growing marijuana and having marijuana uh, sales and growing marijuana in his house. And so the police um, um, went to Jardines home with the drug sniffing dog. After noting that no one had come in or out of the residence for about 15 minutes and that the shades were drawn, the officers bought the drug-sniffing dog on the porch of Jardine's house. 
right? The dog was trained to stop at the place where the strongest odor of marijuana uh, occurred, and the dog stopped at the bottom of the front door on the front porch. The police then went back and told the judge, hey, judge, you know, we got information that this uh, um, uh, guy is, is selling marijuana in his house. And I want a warrant to go in. Let me, and just said, well, what's your probable cause before I say you can have a warrant? They said, well, look, we took a drug-sniffing dog that specializes in smelling marijuana. And we walked up to the guy's front porch. And our dog, when marijuana, when, he, when, he, when our dog smells marijuana, he's trained to sit. See, some of these dogs, uh, they're trained to bark. Uh, and so most of those are the ones that are outside, right? So you got dogs that if they hit on something, they're going to be barking. Like, and so if you go to the airport and you come off the plane, them dogs is trained to sit so they don't disturb a lot of people. And so if you get off the plane, you got your little knapsack and stuff, and there's a dog out there, and he sit while you're walking by him, your ass in trouble. And you're in trouble, right? And so this dog was trained to sit. This dog sat, judge, and he, that's an indication that there's marijuana in the house, also confirmed by our, our informants. So the judge gave him the warrant. They go into Jardine's house, bang, there's the marijuana, and Jardine said, hey, look, that, that was an illegal search. And the police said, hey, wait a minute. Wait, wait, how was that illegal? Because if you look, remember, going back to Cabal's, right? Wait, wait, remember the dog going, y'all like this little dog with the uh, little weed? But, but remember going, uh, see the dog, right? And so what the government said, hey, look at, look at, uh, Your Honor, look at Illinois versus Cabal's. That was decided in 2001. Jardines is in 2013 before the U.S. Supreme Court. They said, we didn't go inside the house. So, so somebody, uh, that, that, that one of you students put on there, do you all think this is the same as Cabal's? And Jen, let me know if anybody says it's the same or if it's different. How, you know, because what the government was arguing is it's the same thing. Remember that when we, when we went around the car, we sniffed in the car, we ain't touching the car. We didn't go in and, and break into his door when we went to Jardine's house. We right there on the front porch. Right? All right, so, so the, the issue... I'm listening to Jan in my ear. All right, all right hold, hold on for a minute, Jan. So is it a violation of the Fourth Amendment for police to bring a drug-sniffing dog on someone's property to obtain evidence of wrongdoing? And, and what Jardine is saying is, hey, you came on, your, on the property with the dog. And, and what the government said is, your mailman come to your front door and put the mail in your mailbox. The Girl Scout come to your front door and knock on the door, right, and talk about, I got cookies. You got people around with the solar panels knocking on your door, you need solar. We, police officers allowed to knock on your door, and uh, you, uh, you want to ask it, and you can say, no, I ain't got nothing to say, and shut the door. But they are, right? Here's the deal. When you live in a house, and somebody comes from the sidewalk and walks up that little, your little walk all the way to your front porch, you give them a license to come to you and knock on your door. So they're not trespassing, are they? Right? And, so that, and that's what the government said. This is the same as Cabal's. Jen, does anybody think it's different? Everybody's saying it's different. Oh, they, they, they ain't hearing me. Look, look. How is that different? If, if, if you let the Girl Scout come on your front porch and the dog is standing right there, right? So, so a police officer and the dog and the Girl Scout all say, hey, let's go. I, I'm going to go sell cookies up there. And the officer says, well, you know, I had other reasons to be here, so I'm going to walk up here with you. And so if the Girl Scout has a right to be there, and the officer and the dog have a right to be there, and the dog smells the marijuana coming from your house. How is that a violation of your privacy? In other words, look, remember the, the case with the, th the guy who, who had the thermal imaging device checking heat? That device is checking heat by looking really inside your house. And what the Supreme Court was saying is, look, man, when it comes to the house, we give heightened levels of protection than your car, than your person out on the street. So the Fourth Amendment 
And that's what they were saying in that case with, with the, uh, the Kylo case with the thermal. The, the First Amendment protects the houses more than it protects anything else. But keep in mind, what, so what the prosecutor in this, in, in, in Jardine is arguing is, this isn't like that thermal Kylo case, right? They looking inside the house. My dog smelling what's coming out. See, if you were in there baking cherry pie, right, and it's going all over the neighborhood, what, what's your privacy interest in the smell of your cherry pie coming out your house? You, I mean, uh, what you going to do, run out the house about everything you smell with respect to my cherry pie is private? And that's what the prosecutor are. Hey, man, marijuana coming out the house, right? They change, y'all change our minds yet? Did they change? Are they convinced? Like, yeah, Lawson, you're right. This is the same thing as a dog on the street. Tell us what the Supreme Court said. All right? And again, that's what I'm, that's something you don't need to know that. All right, the Fourth Amendment search has occurred when the government physically, here's what the court said. The Fourth Amendment, a search has occurred. Remember, we're talking about, I need to go back up. I hate doing this to y'all. But I want you to really understand what I'm saying. Because it ain't, it's, it's not hard. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. Before the Fourth Amendment applies, first you have to determine, do we have a search? Because if it ain't no search, we ain't talking about the Fourth Amendment, right? And so the question becomes, is the dog on the porch smelling your marijuana coming out your house search? Especially when you can allow, the, the mailman can come up there every day and put the mail in and smell of marijuana, just like if you're cooking cherry pie, come in and hey, I smell cherry pie, right? That ain't, right? So let me catch back up where we're at. Right? And here's what the court ruled, that the Fourth Amendment search has occurred when the government physically intrudes on someone's property. Further, the home is paramount, right? Paramount among the places that should be free from unreasonable government intrusion and the curtilage. Now, what they're talking about is um, the curtilage is, is the, the, the area that immediately surrounds your house. You know, sometimes you got bushes and, and, and your porch and areas that's, that's immediately around your house. That's what's called the curtilage. The reason why that's important is because that's considered part of your house, even though it's like right outside your door, right? And so what the court was saying is, look here, man. When you came up, you got everybody, you give the mailman a license to come up there. You give everybody a license to walk up your, your sidewalk, go up to your front door and knock. But you don't give anybody a license to walk up your sidewalk and start walking around your house, peeking through windows and shit like that. You just don't do right? And so once that person goes beyond that, they're really trespassing, okay? Now, getting back to this office and what they're saying. So what the court was saying is, look, since the outside, the front porch, and the areas mainly around the house called the curtilage, since that's part of the house, what you did is you went onto the curtilage, which is like in the house, and you started searching with your dog. And because you didn't have a warrant to go on the curtilage, i.e., which is equivalent to going in the house and search, the search is illegal. Okay? Right? So in this case, the police violated the Fourth Amendment by entering the uh, curtilage of the home to conduct a search. The use of the uh, drug sniffing dog on the property was a search within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment. So that's what a search is. And so again, um, we're going to get to the automobiles and stuff like that, but I really want you to understand what is a search for purposes of the Fourth Amendment? Because if there's no search, then you can't get, you know, there's no violation. There's no civil rights violations. There's no a uh, motion to suppress to get illegal evidence taken out. It just, the, the Fourth Amendment just did not apply. All right, now let me ask you a question. What if the police enter to an apartment building? So you got, uh, uh, let's say you go down to Aloha uh, Towers, right? Now, you're walking down a hallway, a common hallway, like this, like a common hallway like this, right? A common hallway, you're walking down, so the, 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 you, you, you come out your room and you see the officer and he got a dog walking down a hallway and there's like 30 apartments all on the hallway. Some on this side of the hallway, some on that side. And the officer goes up to somebody's apartment front door and the dog sits. And y'all already know, I done told y'all what the sitting means. The sitting means it's the marijuana in there. 
right? Is that an unconstitutional search? That's my question to y'all. Is that Jardine's? Right? Jardine said that, 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 hey, you got that not so fast fight on. Anyway, Jardine said um, that when you come on to, to, to the, the dog was out front sniffing, there's a search. That's the curtilage of a house. But we ain't talking about a house. We're talking about a common hallway where every, people can walk up and down. So uh, somebody tell Jen or let Jen know if you think that, that the apartments down in Aloha Tower, so many apartments, you know, on the mainland where you get, you know, and a lot of times it happens in, in the low-income neighborhoods where you got government complexes, right? Doors, people just walk in, walk out. And so keep in mind, we're talking about that privacy interest. Or here, remember, uh, in Jardines, they're talking about the dog actually, on the curtilage, entered into the person's residence. What do they think, Jen? Well, okay, so there's a delay. Okay. All right, so, so you guys are on delay fuse because of the feed, but, but uh, again, the question really becomes whether or not you truly believe that this, you know, outside the apartment door is the same. In other words, um, and here, here's what happened. The courts, the majority of the courts have ruled that that is not the same as Jardines. In other words, you have no, there's no trespass. When you open the door to the apartment in one of these apartment buildings or government apartment housing or whatever, um, that part in front of your door is not yours. You, you're not the homeowner. It's not curtilage, right? It's just public property. And because it's public property, um, that there's no violation when the officer brings the dog up in front of the apartment door. Now, there's some in Connecticut, right? Um, called, and then this Kono kid, this guy's name was Dennis Kono, and, and the facts are identical to James. There was a tip that police obtained entry into an apartment building legally. They, somebody let them in legally. Uh, and, and, and the drug sniffing dog alerted to the apartment door of Kono, and it was sniffing at the door. The only difference in the two cases is that Jardines lived in a standalone home, and Kono lived in an apartment building. So the question becomes, is this distinction significant, and should it be? And, and the, court in, the Supreme Court in Connecticut said, yeah. Uh, but keep in mind, Jardine's search was illegal because what? Remember, the dog was in the curtilage, which means he was trespassing in the home, so to speak. Here, standing outside of an apartment door, the apartment renter does not own that hallway. That's not the part of their home. That's not part of their apartment, right? And so the court in, the, in Connecticut said, okay, well, this is not a trespass, but let's look at the cat's test. Right. Let's look at the cat's test, and, and the Connecticut Supreme Court ruled it was a violation because there's an ex expectation of privacy, subjective expectation. Remember that's prong one, that what's going on in my apartment is private, and two, that if I open my front door, you ain't gonna be out there the dog sniffing it, and that's one society's willing to recognize as reasonable. And because that those two prongs were met, there's a search, and the uh, Connecticut Supreme Court ruled that it was the same thing as what happened in Jardine's house. That's the minority. Most courts are ruling that no, it's a difference, and, and a policeman can come to an apartment building. As long as somebody gives them lawful entry into the building, they can go door by door with a, with a dog and smell everybody's door. And if it hits on something, they can try to go back and get a warrant. All right, last question. All right, remember the Cabal's case where the dog sniffed around the car that was on a public street? And the court said, that's, that's fine. What if the dog put his paws on the car to smell in? So now you're getting your speeding ticket. You're just waiting. You, 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 come on with my speeding ticket. Then another officer pulls up. He got his little dog in the back. And while you're getting your ticket, he starts walking the dog around your car. And the dog jumps up and then smells inside the car and then alerts. All right, so leave Jen the answer to your questions. I'll answer those questions um, uh, when, I, when, I, when I go back and, and, and look at the uh, live feed and, and, 
uh, go through everything. Uh, but if you got any questions, go ahead and put them up. And remember to uh, uh, my Twitter feed is up here, and I'll, I'll put a link to it at the bottom of the video. I'm going to try to do YouTube live simultaneously next uh, week, not this Thursday. So we're meeting back again Thursday, same time, same place. Uh, but go to my YouTube channel uh, and my Instagram, you know, and, and follow me. Like I said, I'm going to continue to do these classes as long as we all shut in and shut down. Uh, but again, like I said before, a lot of people had aspirations to go to law school. Some of you did, uh, and, and life is life, right? You weren't able to do it. Some of you may have thought, well, I'm not smart enough. I was never smart enough to go to law school. Let me tell you something, man. If I can get through it, any, you know, you're smart enough to get through it. A lot of the stuff that, that you're learning is the same thing. It, it, well, it is the same thing that I teach at the law school, same thing that I learned, right? The only difference is that when you start reading some of this legal language, it looks like you're reading a foreign language. And I just like telling you to, the way it is. Um, so anyway, hey, thanks for coming in. Uh, Jen, I, I, don't, I don't want to flip back to your picture, but Jen, thanks uh, so much for your help. And, and I'll see you guys Thursday. Your homework's the same. Now we're going to do automobile searches, but homework is the same. I want you to make sure that you look at the Fourth Amendment again and read it a little more careful than have in the past, and you'll see um, that some of the stuff will start really making sense to you. Again, not all searches and not all seizures are a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Only the ones that are unreasonable. Right, so the police can search and they can seize things, and we're going to go through that later on in the next couple of weeks as we go through this class. But we're going to see what's an unreasonable search and what's not. All right, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Thursday, see you then.